Britain's Nicky Gooch out to improve, if he can, on the bronze he won in Lillehammer. Well, one competition begins, another concludes. It's the final of well, the... It's not as simple as just skating fast. The skaters are carried round the rink on a made-to-measure boot with a razor-sharp blade screwed in at a slight angle to cope with the very tight bends. That blade is vital for the start of the shorter race where the skaters are flat out to get to the first bend in first place. In the longer race, the skaters start more slowly and the first few laps are something of a cat and mouse affair. But by the time the competitors reach the finish, they're going to be flying at anything up to 30 miles an hour. And the winner is decided by the first skate to cross the line. On this occasion, Great Britain's Nicky Gooch lost second place by inches. Of course, the pace of the event, the cut and thrust of overtaking, and the slippery surface means falls are regular and dramatic. And another way to lose a medal is through disqualification. Nicky Gooch found that out in Lillehammer. Skaters must judge their overtaking precisely. But if you can conquer all those problems, you can become Olympic champion. And former British international Jamie Fern is here to help us further. We're set for the men's 1,000 metres. Nicky Gooch's strongest event, Matt Jasper, is in there as well. Eight heats, the top two go through automatically to the quarterfinals. The commentator is Paul Dickinson. On the inside of the track, Betio of France, then Yakovlev of the Ukraine, Chai of Korea and Tarao of Japan. They're the first four starters in the men's 1,000 metres heat one and what a slow start it is. The Ukrainian, who's not very highly ranked in this competition, who's in the lead at the moment, must be thinking, well, what do I do? There are some far more experienced skaters there. The Japanese skater, Tarao, is just behind him. And the Korean, just tucking in there, and Mathieu of France. So it's a bit of a cat and mouse game at the moment. These early rounds are always very, very difficult indeed for the skaters, not knowing how to judge it in terms of pace. Yakovlev leads, Chai almost going through on the inside. Now there's a big roar for the Japanese skater, who just cruises into the lead with six laps to go. Japan it is with Tarao. Mathieu of France in second. Chai of Korea in third. The Ukrainian lap, Yakovlev, who led for the first two laps, in last place at the moment, just two to qualify for the quarterfinals. Japan, Korea, two of the big nations in short track speed skating. They're in first and second place at the moment. Just coming up with two laps to go now. It's Japan, Korea, the Ukrainians managed to get through into third place. A bit of a slip there by Mathieu of France. They take the bell. Tarao looks safe with the Korean Chai, who's just going through on the inside. I think the Ukrainian and Frenchmen are going to be run out of it. Chai wins it for Korea. Tarao in second place. They're the two qualifiers for the quarterfinal. Heat two now with Germany's Nakbar on the inside. Then Fabio Carter of Italy next to him. He was one of Nicky Gucci's big rivals in the recent European Championships. Frizek of Poland and then Tamura of Japan. Once again, a very, very steady start indeed. Perhaps a little faster than Heat 1. Masaj Prizek of Poland going into the lead. Actually lives in Canada. Has done for a very, very long time, but uh, is skating now for his native Poland, but is just passed there by Naoya Tomura of Japan. Just 18 years old, the overall Japanese champion. It's speeding up now. Six and a half laps to go. Japan in first place. Fabio Carter of Italy coming around the outside. Going wide. Carter. Tamura. Then Prizek. Here comes the German. Well, this really is speeding up. Oh, the Japanese almost cut off on that bend there by Nakbar, the German. Nakbar's making a bid for victory to try and ensure qualification already with three and a half laps to go. 
Ariane Nakbar of Germany leads. Tamura in second place. Fabio Carter. Carter certainly one of the fancied skaters to go through to the quarterfinals. It looks as though it's going to be a tussle between these three. Japan, Italy and Germany locked together. There's the bell. Tamura and Fabio Carter come away. The German will be out of it. That's Nagbar Prijek right at the back. Big cheer for Nayoa Tamura of Japan in first place. Fabio Carter of Italy in second. The two qualifiers for the quarterfinal. Martin Johansson of Sweden on the outside. Inside him, Andrew Gable of the United States. And the Chinese skater, Feng Kai. And from the People's Republic of Korea in the black, Yun Chol. The stadium absolutely packed and uh, certainly a lot of support. They'll be here this evening for the Chinese skaters. All in red, number 113. Quite a steady start. Martin Johansson going through on the inside. He finished fifth in this event in Lillehammer four years ago. Six and a half laps to go. Martin Johansson and uh, just being overtaken there by Feng Kai, just 19 years old. He's very high on the world rankings, the Chinese skater. Johansson just behind Feng Kai of China. Five laps to go in heat three. Right at the back there, Andrew Gable of the USA. He's got a bit of work to do now. He mustn't let the front two get away. It's just two to qualify for the quarterfinals. And a few hands there. Just uh, pushing on the skater in front. Johansson comes into contact once again, but nothing to upset the rhythm of uh, Feng Kai. But it's going to be a bit of a sprint to the line from here. Two laps to go and uh, whizzing through on the inside was Andrew Gable. He's going to have to watch that. Johansson goes through there. Fairly cleanly, there was no contact. Here goes the bell. Martin Johansson from Andrew Gable of the USA and Feng Kai. If Feng Kai doesn't qualify, it'd be a bit of a shock. I don't think he's going to. It's Johansson, Gable, and then Feng Kai of China. A bit of drama in heat three. Good skate from Martin Johansson of Sweden. Heat four now of the men's 1,000 metres. Lee Jean Juan of Korea right on the inside. Then Australia's Stephen Brentbury and Eric Bedard of Canada. Just three skaters, two to go through to the quarterfinals. Well, Australia won their first ever Olympic winter medal back in 1994 in Lillehammer. And Stephen Brantbury from Australia was one of the skaters of that quartet. He's just lying in second place at the moment. The Korean right at the back, Lee Jean-Wan, who's a member of the relay team, the national relay team that uh, won the world championships. I think this is going to be a tough heat for Stephen Bradbury. Eric Bedard of Canada, who's in the lead at the moment, is part of a very, very strong Canadian national squad. Six laps to go. Stephen Bradbury in the lead. The Australians have a good squad here in Nagano as well. Bedard of Canada in second. Lee Jun Wan there of Korea, perhaps just biding his time. We've seen the Koreans in training, and they've been putting in some massive training sessions full of speed and full of good technique. Stephen Bradbury still in the lead, but Bedard tries to take him on the outside. Canada, Australia, Korea. Three laps to go. Stephen Bradbury mustn't let Bedard get away from him. Lee Jun Wan just coming through inside the Australian. Doesn't cut him up. He got some good clean ice there. This should be a blistering last lap. Eric Bedard of Canada. Lee of Korea. Bradbury of Australia. Bradbury's got to produce something special here to go through to the quarterfinal. The Korean comes through and takes it from Bedard. Bradbury in third place. The Australian goes out. That is a surprise. A testing time for Nick Gooch of Great Britain and Guildford, the pride and joy of the Aldwych Club down at the Spectrum Arena in Guildford. But a time that we've all been waiting for. There certainly has been some speculation about the state of Nicky's health. He had a virus when he first arrived here in the training camp, has just been down in the Nagano Olympic Village for the athletes for a little while. And his training has been going quite well, but he did say before this he was very nervous. This is Kim of Korea on the outside. Nick Gooch, Olympic bronze medalist from Lillehammer, and then Drolle of Canada. 
Well, an early pace may suit Nicky Gooch. He's a very fine sprinter over 500 metres. And I'm certain in this event, the 1,000, he will want to make amends for what happened four years ago. He did pass the finishing line in second place, only to be disqualified for a mistake that he made uncharacteristically by overtaking somebody in the inside of a bend. It was that disappointment, really, which then sent him into the 500 metres with added impetus and added vigour, and he came away with a bronze medal. He dearly loved to go one better in these Olympic Winter Games. Five and a half laps to go. Nicky Gooch in the lead. Kim Dong-sung, this brilliant 17-year-old from Korea, world champion already over 1,000 metres. Drolet of Canada in third place. Four laps to go now. Kim leads. Gooch now in third place as Drolet, the Canadian, goes through on the inside. This is really hotting up. Gooch mustn't get out of touch. He goes very, very wide there. Now then, with just two laps to go, Nicky Gooch has got a lot of work to do. He's just tucked in behind Kim. The Canadian leads. Kim in second place. Nicky Gooch of Great Britain in third. They take the bell. This is looking ominous for Great Britain and Nicky Gooch. The Canadian is going to win it just from the Korea. Nicky Gooch comes through a disconsolate third. And that perhaps confirms the rumours, the speculation about Nicky's health. Normally, in that sort of company, well, we know that this is a precarious sport. But he could have almost been guaranteed to come through and certainly qualify for the quarterfinal stages. Kim wins it. And Drolet qualifies as well. But Great Britain will be without Nicky Gooch in the quarterfinal of the 1,000 metres. He did leave himself an awful lot of work to do here. And one sensed that once the Canadian and the Korean just got away, he knew he had too much to do. Desperately disappointed, Nicky Gooch will be, and all his teammates in the British team here and back in Guildford. Matthew Jasper will be very disappointed for his training partner and friend, Nicky Gooch, who failed to get through in Heat 5, but equally, he'll be full of steel and resolve to make sure he qualifies in Heat 6. He's got with him Dave Vestig of the Netherlands, and Yu Long from China, and San Sabilek of Mongolia, one of just two skaters representing that country here. And Yu Long of China in the lead. Dave Vestig, who incidentally is coached by Great Britain's Wilf O'Reilly, and uh, O'Reilly's influence has certainly paid dividends because Vestig recently broke the world record for the 500 metres. Matthew Jasper, an Olympian back in 1992, missed out in 1994, which has made him even more determined to do well here. He's a very fine skater. The Nottingham man, former European champion, in fact, and those three skaters, Vestig, Ann and Jasper, have got away from the Mongolian. Five laps to go. China leads. Great Britain in second place. The Netherlands in third. The Netherlands, of course, keen to carry on the tradition laid down already in these Olympic Winter Games by their long track colleagues. Vestig goes blistering around the outside, came into contact with the Chinese skater, and Matt Jasper gets the inside line just. That's good. Good thinking by Matt Jasper, very sharp indeed. Jasper leads, An Yu Long of China in second. Davis Stieg now is the, the skater in trouble. They'll hear the bell this time. Matt Jasper in first place, An Yu Long of China in second. This is looking good for Great Britain at the moment. Jasper is going to win it, and it'll be a photograph for second between Vestig and An Yu Long of China. But... What Nicky Gooch could not do in the previous heat, Matt Jasper has made sure he's done enough to get himself through to the quarterfinal. For Stieg, the world record holder, that record is yet to be ratified, but he'll have to wait for just a few moments to see if he's qualified ahead of An Yu Long of China. Matt Jasper just blowing a little bit. But he did very well indeed there against two very, very good skaters. He goes through to the quarterfinal of the 1,000 metres. Matt Jasper took the initiative in Heat 6. He knew that Vestig had a big, big finish on him. And I think 
it was the Chinese skater, Anne, who got through ahead of the world record holder for the 500, Vestig of the Netherlands. But Jasper has made it by winning heat six. Heat seven of the 1,000 meters, Mark Gagnon, the world record holder for Canada on the outside. Uematsu of Japan it is, who just tucks in in second place behind Bruno Loscos and Scott Coons of the United States of America. So Mark Gagnon, one of the most experienced skaters in the world. The Canadian squad, extremely strong. They've got a massive amount of talent in Canada to pick from in this sport. And Gagnon certainly knows his way around the short speed, the short track speed skating rink. Just looking around there to see what's going on around him. Uematsu of Japan is in second place. The Frenchman Loscos in third. Just 18 years old, the French champion. And Scott Coons of the USA has got a bit of work to do in fourth place. Four and a half laps to go. Mark Gagnon, the world record holder, leads heat seven of the men's 1,000 meters. France in second. Japan in third. And this stadium packed with Japanese supporters. Three laps to go for Mark Gagnon. France now move into second place with Bruno Loscos. Uematsu in third. Scott Coons, well, he's losing touch just a little bit. But now Mark Gagnon just turns on the afterburners a little bit to get himself out of trouble. Uematsu coming through into second place as they take the bell. The Frenchman and uh, Coons of the USA getting into a bit of a tangle. I don't think there's any problem about Mark Gagnon qualifying here. Uematsu may have just taken it on the line, but the Canadian and Japanese skaters go through in Heat 7 to qualify for the quarterfinals. The final heat of the men's 1,000 meters. Just on the inside, Rusty Smith of the United States, and going into the lead is Han Sang-gook of the People's Republic of Korea. Wearing the light blue is the very, very good Michele Antonioli of Italy, another big rival of British skaters on the European circuit. And the final skater, Lai Jaijun, who was sixth in the World Championships at this distance when it was held in Nagano in 1997. That was the first big event that was held in this stadium. So the Chinese athlete leads, Lai Shai Jun from Antaglioli of Italy. The Italians, the reigning Olympic champions for the relay. He didn't skate four years ago in Lillehammer. But the Italians have got a very fine squad indeed. Rusty Smith overtaking and leading for the first time in this race, but that was short-lived. Lai Shai Jun of China into the lead. Rusty Smith in second, Antaglioli in third. Three and a half laps to go in the final heat of the men's 1,000 meters. Lai Jai Jun coming round, Rusty Smith with three laps to go, bursts into the lead. You can't afford to make mistakes when you're going round this 111-meter circuit and ending up to under nine seconds. And Tolioli just getting in a tangle with the Chinese skater. But the Chinese skater coming through once again, that's Lai Jai Jun. The American has absolutely blasted away to make sure Rusty Smith will win the final heat. It's going to be a photograph for second, I think. Lai Jai Jun got it for China. He'll be the last qualifier for the quarterfinals of the men's 1,000 meters. But that was a very fine skate by Rusty Smith of the USA. Michele Antonioli of Italy waiting to see if there is going to be an objection in the final heat because of that tangle he came up with ken pendry the british referee one of the most experienced men in the world of short track speed skating but the italian certainly getting in a big tangle with lai jai Zhan of china on that bend and the referee will have to decide whose ice it was there it is there i suspect the italian may have grounds for an objection Well, in fact, the result of the final heat stands as the skaters pass the line. Smith it was, with Lai of China, who qualify for the quarterfinals. Our former British international Jamie Fern is watching all that with us. We loaded poor old Nicky Gooch with so much expectation. How disappointed should we be for him now? Um, I think we've got to take everything into, into, uh, into account, really. I think uh, a, lot of, a lot was expected of Nicky, and... Uh, I think he puts a lot of pressure on himself to bring the best from himself, but his preparation of being out there and not 
I've been able to train for a week. He'd also had that problem with a virus, hadn't he, last week? How does that interrupt That's right. the flow of preparation? That's right. I mean, even if Nicky makes a full recovery from, from an infection of that nature, the, uh, the confidence he's lost in getting used to the arena and skating on the, on the ice day in, day out, and uh, feeling good about himself leading up to the competition it has, has uh, as well as physical effects, it has psychological effects of uh, am I quite ready or, or am I not and because uh, you were thinking when you saw him head to the start line how tense he looked yeah yeah I thought it went out very positive um, he obviously had a, a talk with uh, with the coach Alan Luke and uh, it did go out very positive it was just unfortunate that um, he couldn't relax when he was at the front he gave him the best possible best possible uh, advantage being at the front that he, he did actually. Well here's the halfway point of, of, of that heat and, he, and he's dropped back from the front in, into third place and this is the point possibly where negative thoughts start coming into the mind I suppose. Yeah that's right I mean N Nicky was at the beginning uh, at the front of the, in the beginning uh, and then the jump was made and he, he find himself at the back and when you see the lap counter going uh, three laps ago, two laps ago, and you can't actually do anything about it. It, uh, it does make it tends to be even more, and then it becomes increasingly more And that more point difficult. there, he, he knew the chance had gone. Yeah, yeah, I think uh, it, it'd, be, it'd be very disappointed. Uh, hopefully, we'll be able to turn it around for, for the next distance. But uh, Tactically, how difficult is it with, with two to go through from each of these heats? The guy in second knows that all he has to do is hang on to second, so he's defending the position quite strongly. That's right. Um, it is very difficult. I mean, Nicky's race was the only one with three three guys in it. He had two guy, good, good guys against him. Uh, the world champion from Korea and uh, Frank Droulet from Canada, who is a very good, uh, very good skater part of the strong Canadian team. Um, as I say, he went out positively. It's just, uh, it, it's knowing what to do. You only have about a minute and a half to decide. He went out with positive intentions and in the end, he, he, he tensed up and was unable to make a challenge at the end to qualify but uh now by contrast with that matt jasper another character you know very well indeed different yeah. kind of character to nicky gooch yeah yeah he's um nicky is uh, is one of the best trainers in the world um so for nicky to miss obviously his week training would would affect nicky quite bad if it had been the other way around then possibly matt would have been able to pull it off because matt can raise it for competition um and he, he did skate an extremely good race. Yes, he saw what happened to Nicky, what, 10 minutes or so earlier. How would that have affected him? It might have made him feel a little bit more positive and determined. Possibly, possibly. It may even have increased it with the fact that Nicky's out, the nation's resting on my shoulders sort of thing. But uh, Matt, Matt, enjoyed that. Matt, Matt quite <laughs> likes that. Uh, he quite likes that. So Certainly uh, needed to be aggressive in his heat, didn't he? Yeah, he, he, was, uh, he skated a very, very, very good race. He, was, he, he used a lot of his experience in, uh, in beating the Dutch guy. There so he is, he lying second, and uh, that's the point he knew that a battle was on. That's right. If, if, if you watch Matt, he does look very relaxed, and he uh, is very alert looking around him for the other skaters' moves. And as soon as the move was made, he was able to counter that up the inside, which uh, put me in good stead over the closing laps. And uh, it, it, it did close it out very well, because once you get to the front, sometimes you can think, I'm there, I've got to hold on and you can tighten up, but he looked uh, reasonably relaxed for, for a first race, it was, it was very pleasing to see. And reasonably happy when that finishing line came. You thought he might have just eased up a fraction early. Yeah, you should, you, we, we always say you must skate through the line. Um, the times that uh, people have lost the race just on the, the final, final few yards, so he should skate through the line, but obviously uh, he, he was overjoyed in, in getting through. So. He'd made it through to the quarterfinals, so good luck Matt. In those quarterfinals we can go straight on to the quarterfinals of the men's thousand meters. It's an electric atmosphere in the white ring for the quarterfinals of the men's 1000 meters. An event for which we had high hopes of Nicky Gooch. Unfortunately, the Guilford man was eliminated in the heats, but Matt Jasper is there in the first quarterfinal and he really has drawn a tough one. Jasper, along with Tarao of Japan, Mark Ganyan, the world record holder from Canada, and Lee Jun Kwan of Korea. Nine laps of this very, very fast ring, and just two will go through to the semi-final. Well, Matt certainly took the initiative in the heat. He's tucked in there in last place at the moment. Mark Ganyan goes through, the tallest man in the field. He always looks very relaxed 
and very comfortable leading from the front. To Rao of Japan in second place, Matt Jasper cruising through into third. And the Korean, who's a very fast finisher, Lee Jun Hwan, he's in fourth place at the moment. Ganyan takes them through with six laps to go. Jasper moves comfortably into second. Tarao in third. Don't write off the Korean. His second half of the race could be a blistering pace. Jasper is British record holder for the 500 meters. He's got a very fast finish. Marganyan cruising through for Canada. Three and a half laps to go. Satoru Tarao of Japan in second. Nottingham's Matt Jasper in his second Olympic Winter Games. Just uh, impeded on the curb there a little bit by Lee Jun Wan of Korea. And this is where it's going to get tough for the British skater. He's losing touch just a little bit. One and a half laps to go. A massive cheer going up in the stadium for Tarao of Japan. The world record holder Ganyan in second place. Matt Jasper's out of it. Two to go through to the semi-final, a bit of bumping between the Japanese and Ganyan has gone. Jasper is coming through now into second place. There may well be an objection by the Korean. Tarao wins it for Japan. Matt Jasper is second across the line. The Korean is making all sorts of protests to the judges in the middle, including Great Britain's Ken Pendry, the referee for this men's 1,000 metres. There's Mark Ganyan, the world record holder disconsolate and a distant last place Matt Jasper I don't think can believe it well certainly if it was two skaters it'll be six of one and half a dozen of the other if we see the replay to see exactly what happened no doubt about the winner and no doubt about the roars that went up in the stadium for Tarao of Japan Ganyan got knocked there a little bit he definitely moved out into the path of the Korean well as yet unresolved, but that was a big knock there that Ganyan gave the Korean, trying to move outside the Japanese skater. We'll have to wait and see whether Matt Jasper goes through, but I think he will. Matt Jasper having a conversation with the winner of that heat, Tarao of Japan. An objection certainly has been made by Lee of Korea against Mark Ganyan of Canada. Ken Penry, the British referee, consulting the Canadians but certainly the discussion around the stadium is the moment is that Ganyan will not go through. The objection was made by the Koreans against him. And if anybody will go through, it will be Lee. And it certainly looks as though Lee has gone through. But where does that leave Matt Jasper? Ken Pendry, one of the most experienced referees in the world. But it does look as though... Matt Jasper has qualified. He's up on the computer as having done so. Tarao with a new Olympic record with Matt Jasper and Lee progress through to the semi-finals. Brilliant news for Nottingham's Matt Jasper and Great Britain. After the drama of the world record holder being disqualified in the first quarter final, What's in store for these guys? Johansson of Sweden, Drolle of Canada, Fabio Carter of Italy, and Kim Dong Sung at just 17 years old. The first man in the history of this sport, he's in third place at the moment, to win junior and senior world titles in the same year. He's quite some prospect. Well, the Korean is lying in third place. Martin Johansson, the big Swede in second place. And the Canadian there, Francois Drolle of Canada, he won heat six when Nicky Gooch was eliminated. He's dropped back into fourth place. Well, this is a rough, tough sport. You've got to have tremendous vision when you're moving at speeds of over 30 miles an hour around these very tight bends. Coming up towards five laps to go now. The young Korean, Kim Duk Sung, in the lead. Fabio Carter in second place. Johansson in third, but Drolle trying to go through on the inside. It couldn't be tighter. Certainly not as fast as the first quarter final. A new Olympic record was set then, but Fabio Carter making the break. The Korean in second place. Drolle of Canada in third. Fabio Carter wants to get himself out of trouble and ensure that he qualifies but he's still got a couple of hundred meters to go. Drolle is coming through on the inside ahead of the young Korean. This could be a bit shocked, but the Korean comes back. Less than a lap to go. Fabio Carter for Italy leads. The Korean, Kim in second place. Drolle, the Canadian, it could be the one who's left out of it. Yes, he is. 
Carter wins it. Kim for Korea in second place. Francois Drolet of Canada goes out. The third quarter final with Tamura of Japan right on the inside. Rusty Smith of the United States going into second place. In fact, the Canadian, Eric Bedard, it is who leads. Eight laps to go in the third quarter final. It's been quite a dramatic competition already. Bedard has already seen his teammate. Gagnon, the world record holder, be eliminated. He was actually disqualified. Now, Tamura of Japan leads. Rusty Smith, the American, in last place at the moment. And between those two, Anne of China and the Canadian Bedard. Well, it's really hotting up now. The big American trying to get round on the outside, but the line is being held by Tamura of Japan. Tamura and Bedard, and then the Chinese athlete, An Yulong, coming through to take the lead. Three laps to go in the third quarter final of the 1,000 meters. An Yulong of China leads. Bedard of Canada in second place. There's going to be a huge cheer to try and inspire Tamura of Japan, who's in third place at the moment. Rusty Smith of the USA. Well, he's about a meter behind those three. It's just two to go through to the semifinals. Listen to the roar. Oh. The Japanese skater just squeezing through there with Bedard of Canada. It's Japan and Canada, and one of them has gone. It's Rusty Smith, the United States. Oh. The American will be desperately upset with that, but Japan have come good at just the right time. He was the second fastest qualifier from the heats. He now goes through to the semi-final. The last quarter-final of the men's 1,000 meters, Lai Zhejuan of China on the inside, Andy Gable of the United States, the Korean Chai Jae-hoon, silver medalist in Lillehammer, and Uematsu of Japan. Well, the Japanese would desperately love to get two men through to the semi-final. Already Tamura has done that, and convincingly as well. Eight laps to go, and it's very leisurely indeed at the moment. Chai Jai Hoon of Korea leading against Japan. Andy Gable of the USA, who saw his teammate Rusty Smith fall in the last quarterfinal and was eliminated. The American at the back. Japan for the first time go into the lead, and then <laughs> Chai Jai Hoon just cruises through. Lai Jai Juan of China. Uematsu, Gable trying to come through on the inside. That was a little tight there. Four and a half laps to go. China, Japan, Korea, the United States. Now beginning to speed up. The American, Andy Gable, mustn't let the rest get away. But these guys can all turn it on. They're very fast sprinters. Lapping at around 10 seconds, if not less, for each 111-meter circuit. The Korean trying to go through on the inside, nearly impeded the Chinese. Lai Zhai Xuan, Andy Gable screaming through for the USA as well. This is brilliant. They get the bell, they're all over the place. The United States have lost it once again on the last lap. But China look as though they're going to win it. Lai Zhai Xuan and Korea come through. Chai Zhai Hoon off Korea in second place. Unfortunately, Uematsu of Japan did not make it. Matthew Jasper qualifies sixth fastest for the semi-finals of the men's 1,000 meters. So Matt Jasper is through to the semi-finals, but Jamie, I think the smile at the end said it all. A bit lucky to be there. Yeah, um, he skated very well. Um, I think at the end he may have had some equipment trouble. Yeah, you noticed that he was looking, looking at the yeah, blades. Yeah, looking down his blades, whether he's lost, he lost an edge, which would uh, have a big impact on the amount of uh, speed he could generate. So near the end where they started to put the pressure on, that would, would have been severely handicapped. But uh, it went all according to his race plan, I'm sure. Yeah. It went, I mean, you could see when he started to fall back because he was right up there with the others and gradually sort of fell back towards the end of the race. Is that when you thought yeah, the problem happened? Yeah, that's right. He, uh, we can just see uh, with, a, with a couple of laps to go, he's al already a little out of touch. 
Yeah, he's, he's dropped off a little bit. Um, he's way the, down now. Yeah, the, they've made, they've made a, a, a move for the, for the, the, the uh, qualifying places. Now, whose fault was that bad error, um, in your opinion? Well, it looked, on, on the slow-mo, it looked like Mark moved out. Whether, whether, we go. whether he did that to gain some more speed and do a few more strides into the bend, and was surprised to see um, the Korean still, still there on the outside of him. Uh, he probably expected the Korean to just drop back a bit and attack him on the bend, come out of the bend. Uh, but uh, yeah, they actually collided in, uh, in Mark trying to get some extra speed. He, he was a gesture of, of cross tracked the Korean, which is uh, against the rules. So well, you know Matt well. What will he be feeling now through to the semi final? Uh, I think he'll be getting some confidence. <laughs> um, I mean, he's just qualified on, on the back of uh, a bit of a, a mix up with the other two guys. Mm -hmm. But um, he'll, he'll be enjoying he'll, it, won't he? He'll, he'll be, I think he'll be getting more and more relaxed. Uh, someone's looking after him somewhere, I think. And uh, even though his equipment, he did have a problem with his equipment, which he'll be able to put right between the next race. He, um, he did look relaxed and he was using his head and doing all the right moves early on in the race. It was only at the end when he could no longer uh, keep up because of the equipment trouble. He, uh, he dropped off, but uh, like I say, he, uh, he went according to plan at the end of the day, I think. Okay, thanks, Jim. We'll see how Matt fares. He goes in the second of the semi finals. The first semi final of the men's 1000 meters. Tamura of Japan, Carter of Italy. Chai of Korea, Eric Bedard of Canada, and Andy Gable of the United States, who has advanced through to this semi final as a result of being impeded in the quarters. And that's why there are five skaters there. Exactly the same situation in the second semi final, which includes Great Britain's Matt Jasper. Japan leads at the moment, Canada in second. No Mark Gagnon, the world record holder. He was one of the two skaters disqualified in the quarters. Big surprise that. Tamura leads, Bedard in second place, the Korean, very good Korean, Chai, who got the silver medal in Lillehammer four years ago. He's in third place, Andy Gable from the United States in fourth, and an excellent skater is Fabio Cardin from Italy, but he's lagging behind in last place at the moment. Four laps to go in the first semi-final of the men's 1000. It's Japan, Canada, Korea, Italy, the United States, just two to qualify for the final. Oh! The Korean's gone, the Japanese has gone, the Italian's gone. And would you believe it, Andy Gable has got a free ride. Just under two laps to go. Well, Andy Gable can afford to cruise. Eric Bedard, the Canadian, is some way behind him. The bell has gone for Gable, the Korean favorite. Chai just skating around the ice. But Gable it is who comes through to take the first semi-final in first place. Can you believe it? Canada second, Eric Bedard. Well, he puts his hands up to say what on earth happened there. He managed to keep himself out of trouble. Tamura comes through in third place. Fabio Carter is on his feet as well. And uh, the Korean Chai. But Bedard there, like Gable, managing to stay out of trouble. And that was full of drama, and there is certainly a lot of consultation going on between the referees in the middle of the ice. That was the Korean just going through. Well, you can tell what he feels just by the look on his face. Andy Gable can't believe it. He's through to the final. We'll have to wait and see as to whether there is a disqualification here. The Korean going through on the inside with the Canadian and the Japanese. I suspect the Korean will be disqualified, but whether that will affect the overall result, whether any other skater will be advanced through to the final, we'll have to wait and see. Chai it was who took the ice away from the Japanese Tamura. Eric Bedard of Canada managed to stay on his feet and that was good enough to take the Canadian through with Andy Gable of the United States.
The Japanese team hands aloft along with Fabio Carda's coach there, the Italian national coach. Ken Pendry of Great Britain consulting with the rest of the referees as we see Matt Jasper already out on the ice getting ready for his semi-final. There will be a long inquest about this one, that is for sure. So Britain has a part to play in the first semi-final as well as Matt Jasper just skates through, just trying to compose himself. The Italians are livid. Korea with Chai on the inside. Tamura it was who led. Eric Bedard of Canada was very, very lucky indeed. But the Italian went out, the Korean, the Japanese. Andy Gable had a free ride to the finish and Bedard was there as well. Well, certainly as Ken ben Pendry contemplates all the objections, Gable and Bedard are through to the final. The Japanese are still protesting, as are the Italians. Chai, it certainly seems, is disqualified the Korean. But what about Tamura and Carter of Italy? The first race of the men's 1,000 meter final semi-final. In first place, number 147, Andrew Gable from the USA. And in second place, Number 106, Eric Bedard from Canada. Confirmation that Andy Gable and Eric Bedard of Canada progress through to the final. Now here are the skaters competing in the second round for the men's 1,000 meter semifinal. Matthew Jasper goes in the second semifinal of the men's 1,000 meters. A great chance for this British skater who served his country so well over many, many years. He's never been as far as this in Olympic competition before. So Toro Tarao goes for Japan. Matt Jasper is there. Lee of China, Lee of Korea, and Kim duk Sung of Korea as well. Two Koreans, and Kim, a fabulous skater, just 17 years old. And in fact, the youngster right at the back, just in behind Matt Jasper, who moves through comfortably into third place. I guess in this situation, speed is obviously very important, but experience is very important as well. And Matt Jasper's got bags of it. Six laps to go. Lee of China leads. Tarao of Japan in second place. And the Korean now hurtles into the lead. That is Lee, the elder teammate of Kim, who's back in fourth. Matt Jasper just behind him. But it's really winding up now. Just under four laps to go. Tarao leads for Japan. Matt Jasper's back in fifth place at the moment. Just two to go through to the final. Lee of China goes through. Japan in second. Korea third and fourth. Now come on, Matt Jasper. All he's worked for over the years and being cheered on, I'm sure, by the rest of the British squad, including Nicky Gooch, will be there somewhere. It's Lee at the moment. They're taking the bell. A bit of a tumble there. Kim, it is, in the lead at the moment for Korea. Lee in second place. Matt Jasper in fourth. Can he make it? Oh, my goodness! Well, as Kim and Lee, Korea and China take first and second, there was almost a collision. I don't think it would have made any difference to the final result. Matt Jasper will not go through to the final, but he has acquitted himself very, very well indeed here in this Olympic 1,000 meters. Lee of China, he skated that semi-final extremely well. But Kim of Korea, at just 17 years old, the reigning world champion, looks tougher and tougher. Matt Jasper back in fifth place at this stage. Lee in the red and the Korean just going through there, impeding the Chinese skater a little, but I don't think it'll make any difference to the overall decision and the result of the second semi-final Matt Jasper there failing to qualify just
confirmation of that result. Matt Jasper in third place, and he will contest the B final in the Olympic Games for the men's 1,000 meters. In first place. His quest for a medal is gone, but uh, he gave it a good shot, but that was a very, very tough semi-final, wasn't it? Yeah, it was very tough. I'd have preferred him to have the, the first race. Um, given what happened, it would have been great if he had the first race, but even, even before, it, before the race went ahead, the actual people in the race would have suited Matt's style, mm. his hustle and bustle of, uh, of racing, a bit better than the, uh, the Asians who, uh, who just do laps and laps, and as you saw at the end, he had the speed, but uh, with four guys in front of him, he couldn't quite pick his way through to qualify. Which, uh, so, so given that kind of opposition, what would have been Matt's best tactics, be best method of attacking this semi-final? Um, I think that the biggest problem that he had was um, when the actual break went at four, four to go, he, uh, he got his weight a little bit far back. And uh, when, when the break did go, he, he was on the back foot, as it were. He got his weight a little bit too far back and had to steady him before he could start making his inroads into into the skaters, so they made a gap, which he quickly closed down, but uh, he, he, he just missed the jump slightly. Just managed to nick third on the line, which would have given him some satisfaction, I'm sure. That's right, that's twice now. He's beaten uh, Lee, the, the Korean, who uh, in the world rankings is, is number one in the world at that event, so he's beaten him twice now. Well, Matt now goes off into the B final. What about that crash, though, in the first semi final? Did the judges get it right, do you think? Um, yeah, um, it was. It was quite a pile up. It, um, I felt a bit sorry for the Japanese guy who was kind of pulled, pulled down from him for his first spot um, and, fe and subsequently failed to qualify from that. If we see the Korean dives down the inside and Eric Bedar, the Canadian skater, stands his ground and uh, the Japanese gets a hand on his back which helps him out of the race. And uh, Andy Gable, who's uh, quite a wily competitor, uh, is there to... Uh, capitalise on, on the situation. It's a tough old sport of yours, isn't it? When all that preparation can go to waste with one bit of luck, one elbow in the wrong place or whatever. That's right, that's right. And the same with Nicky Gooch, just one, one week of being, or a couple of weeks of being ill, and that's four years preparation that he's, he's been going through, more or less, for, for that event anyway, has uh, is, is let him down. But um, yeah, an elbow or a bit of dirt or somebody else's uh, mistake can, can hinder yourself and your your aspirations and dreams. So. Well, that's the sport. Sometimes you get the lucky breaks in another direction as well. Uh, Matt Jasper certainly got that during the course of his quarter final. Uh, but he now goes through to the B final. We've got the main final coming up in just a moment. But first of all, here's Matt in that B final. Matt Jasper being introduced to the crowd for this men's B final in the 1,000 metres. There's pride at stake, but the history books will tell us as well that medals could possibly be at stake also. It was Mark Gagnon, the world record holder, who won the B final in Lillehammer four years ago. And because of two disqualifications, including Great Britain's Nicky Gooch, in the final, the A final, Mark Gagnon ended up with a bronze. So, who knows? Matt Jasper lines up alongside Tamura of Japan, Fabio Carter of Italy, and Lee of Korea. Matt Jasper of Nottingham just failed to get through to the final by 0 0.3 of a second. It really would have been the crowning glory to get through to the final, perhaps in the later stages of his career, but uh, he has renewed vigor, certainly. Missing out on the 94 games, having gone to Albertville in 92 and making this team for Nagano. A big shock to see Nicky Gooch go out in the very first round, but obviously Nicky under the weather. But Matt Jasper has performed very well here indeed. This is not going to be a fast race. It's going to be cat and mouse all the way. Matt Jasper for Great Britain at the back as the four skaters come through with five laps to go in the B final of the 1,000 metres. Japan with Tamura, Fabio Carter of Italy, Lee of Korea and Matt Jasper, now it's beginning to motor. Fabio Carter, who had a very good European Championships recently, goes into the lead. The Japanese are screaming for Tamura in second place. Matt Jasper trying to get through on the inside. He goes ahead of the Korean, but it's Fabio Carter. 
who's blasting away from the front from about three and a half laps out he went for it but he's got Tamura right behind him Matt Jasper is in fourth place there goes the bell Tamura goes through on the inside Matt Jasper will finish in fourth place Fabio Carter there just having a little look at the Japanese Japan first Italy second Korea third Great Britain's Matt Jasper finishes in fourth place in the B final of the Olympic 1000 meters Eric Bedard of Canada being introduced just before the final of the men's 1,000 meters. Lie of China. And alongside Bedard and Lai are Kim Duxun of Korea, a brilliant young skater at 17 years old, and Andy Gable of the USA. Ready? Well, Andy Gable, just making sure there's plenty of space between himself and Kim Dug Sung. And the Korean right at the back there shows bat maturity beyond his years. He could go down as one of the youngest champions of his generation if he gets this one right. Eric Bedard in the lead, having the skate of his life during the preliminary rounds of this 1,000 meters. China, Canada. United States and Korea it's not going to be fast but as we begin to wind it up just a little bit one thing is guaranteed the last couple of laps will be blindingly fast Eric Bedard leads the skaters go through with five laps to go in the 1000 meter final Bedard and Lai the Korean has moved up into third place Kim Dug Sung trying to make a move on the rest but is just blocked out by Lai Andy Gable's got some work to do. The United States have never won an individual medal in short track skating. It's beginning to wind up now. They're coming round with two laps to go. China lead from Canada. Korea in third, Andy Gable almost goes. This time they hear the bell, China. The Korean going through on the inside. There's inches between all three of them. Eric Bedard, I don't know what he can do now. Can he go through on the inside? He can't. I think the Korean's got it. Ahead of Lai of China and Eric Bedard in third place. It's not the chest over the line. It's the boot that counts. Korea have never lost an individual event in men's short track speed skating history since this sport burst on the scene in 1992. And I think Kum Duk Sung of Korea has done it again. The junior world champion last year, now he's the Olympic champion. There must have been a couple of centimeters to spare between himself and the man in second place. But that was a very mature piece of skating. Lai of China can't quite believe it. But he will be the silver medalist and not the gold medalist. That privilege, that honor, and that medal goes to Kim of Korea. Well, it's 17 years old, my goodness. What can this guy do in the future? He's not a, a world record holder yet, except in the relay. But some of the records look as though they could be his for the taking. Eric Bedard for Canada gets the bronze, but gold to Korea, silver to China. And he keeps up this amazing record that Korea have got in the sport, but my goodness, only just. Yeah, I thought, um, I thought the Chinese guy was favourite coming out of the bend, and uh, somehow, I don't, I don't know where he got his speed from, but the Korean just managed to... Uh, get some sort of speed from from anywhere I don't know Do the Koreans going. as a team have this sort of air of invincibility about them when it comes to this sport um they've got a very very good squad they they all train together and uh, they keep producing these people who can just they get they seem to get younger and younger um, I think the and the, the, they all seem to be called Kim I think Kim <laughs> Ki-hoon easy for commentators Kim <laughs> Ki-hoon won it in Alberville won it in Lillehammer yeah. now we've got another Kim who's won it uh, in Nagano. So, uh, yeah, it's like a production line, I think. And, uh, <laughs> they've got a great setup. Well, let's just remind ourselves of exactly how close it was. It almost went to China, this. And, and Kim was back in third and seemed to be battling, didn't he? Yeah. Um, 
at this point, I thought he would do very well to uh, get other than the bronze. Eric Bedar, uh, the Canadian in second place, was obviously, he escaped a very positive race, but uh, to, which ensured himself a medal. But um, I, d I didn't think it was going to be gold at any point. Uh, and then he kind of get muscles, get, gets muscled out of it on that bend. And even here, Kim's got a lot of work to do. And he even manages with a slight slip yeah. to get his foot out first. So uh, great disappointment for the Chinese guy, but uh, a great finish by, by the And Korean. that's the important final move, wasn't it? Getting the right boot out. That's, that's right. Um, you, can, you can be disqualified sometimes if it's, if it's deemed to be uh, dangerous skating. But uh, with, with them both remaining on the feet and it wasn't a, a definite lunge, he, uh, he managed to secure first place. Yeah. And the men's title goes to Korea once again. What about the women? Well, another short track speed skating event taking place today was the women's 3,000 metres relay. The top four teams qualified for the final. Each team consists of four team members. It's one of the most exciting events to watch. Here's Paul Dickinson once again. The women's relay final, Canada, Japan, Korea and China. And straight away, it's Canada in the blue helmets. Korea just behind China. Korea wearing the red helmets in third place, China yellow, and Japan, the host nation, in fourth place, wearing white. Well, we've had some brilliant semi-finals already. In the first, the Japanese set an Olympic record, only to be smashed by a couple of seconds by the Koreans in the second. And so far in Olympic short track history, Olympic gold stand at one all. Canada won the very first in 92, then Korea, now the world record holders, they won in 94 in Lillehammer. Canada have got a great squad. The Chinese, it is, moved through into first place. Nothing between the four teams. 20 and a half laps to go. The Canadians have certainly got a lot of experience, a good push there. And that sends Isabelle Charest, former World Championship silver medalist over 500 away in second place, behind the Chinese number three, Yang Yang, a 21, the oldest member of her team. China, Canada, Korea, Japan. And the White Ring Stadium here, it's shaped like a flying saucer. If Japan were to win this, it would probably take off as well. But Japan have got an awful lot to do. As the Chinese come up with 16 laps to go. I'm sure at this pace, if they can keep it up, they can attack the Koreans' world record. Oh, the Japanese and the Canadians are down. But it was a Canadian incoming skater. It may well have been one of the free skaters around the inside because Canada are still there. But Japan are nearly a lap behind. So drama on the 15th lap as they come round with 13 to go Japan heading Korea the reigning Olympic champions and the world record holders by a couple of meters Canada the 92 gold medalist in third place unfortunately Japan with that fall are not going to get a medal it's very very close between China and Korea with ten and a half laps to go in the women's relay final Canada are about 15 metres back. But this is all about gold medal performances coming from perfect timing. That was a brilliant push. Wang Chun Lu it is for China going through with nine laps to go. Ahead of the Korean number one, that's An Sung Mai. It really is a two-way fight now for the gold medal. The Koreans look ominous. Just tucking in behind the Chinese skater. Now the two skaters inside, looking for the changeover. It comes now. China still in the lead, but only just. China lead with six laps to go in the relay final. A meter between themselves and the reigning Olympic champions and world record holders, Korea. Another big change there, but the Koreans can't get ahead. Canada looks safe for third place. Japan have been lapped by these two leading teams. Now the closing stages of the women's relay final. 
it could all be down to the last couple of skaters. The final changeover is going to be crucial. This young Chinese squad who promised so much leading up to the Olympics, here it comes. Oh, the Koreans nip through on the inside. China may get through, they go wide, they take the bell, and now it's do or die for the Chinese. Korea are going to have it. This is an incredibly fast time as well. Korea retained their Olympic title with a new world record. China in second place. Canada will get the bronze. Japan, the host nation, desperately disappointed in fourth place. But you don't get more exciting sport than that. That was wonderful stuff. Korea have made short track skating, certainly at the World Championships, their own. By far and away, the biggest medals since this medal winners since this sport was introduced in 1992. They beat their world record by almost a second, and they did it at the right time. China just pipped at the post. Canada won in 92. There's a couple of veterans in that team. Isabel Charest, who was there in 92. Annie Perot as well. They get a bronze this time. Korea with a new world record take the gold medal in the women's relay. China get the silver, Canada the bronze. So just to confirm the result, the world champions Korea retain their Olympic title and uh, a world record, but also China, they also broke the world record. They took the silver, Canada the bronze. But, uh, Jamie, I've got to say that looked terribly confusing there. I mean, how do you know? I mean, do they have to skate in order of the four? Yeah, you, you, have, you have an order, um, one, one through to four, and basically uh, you have your last, last skate. You best skated in the last two laps because one skater has to the last two. Um, and generally they, they change every one and a half laps, which it looks mayhem because they change in on opposite corners rather than one, one corner all the time. But uh, the, the idea is that you keep an eye on the guys who are in the track and not the battles in the middle <laughs> who are trying to get in. Or and you try, at least. You try, yeah. <laughs> they're, they're just trying to generate this, the, the racing speed for when they get in to have a, a good changeover, but uh, it, it can be quite chaotic. A good day for Korea. And you were saying that just a 14-year-old in the team. Right? Yeah, the, the, the actual girl who finished for the Koreans was, at, she, I think, uh, her name's Yumi Kim. Some, another Kim. Another Kim. <laughs> um, she, she's only about 14, so... Uh, a lot of a lot of weight on the shoulders, but obviously she, she was more than up to it in the end. And they do actually train with the men as well, which which brings them along uh, quite nicely, I think. Turning to the men's competition just briefly, Britain Britain go in the relay in there. What, what yeah, are their chances right. there? Um, they're looking good uh, with with Matt skating especially well. Uh, I think Nicky Nicky sh should be able to get his head head together to have a good 500 meter championship, and then uh, following on from that, the relay with that. And uh, once you've got two out of the four guys, it, it spurs on the other two guys in the team. And a new bride means a new home and a new family. But how do you get by when your in-laws hate you? In a city, you choose your friends. You're not slumped in a goldfish bowl with everybody you hate and everybody you've ever slept with. You live in our village now. You live by our village rules. I had to do it. You humiliated my mum and my dad. It's a family How do you want me? New comedy, Tuesday at 10 on BBC Two. More action from the Winter Olympics now on BBC Two. It's introduced by Steve Ryder and Sue Barker. Day 13 at the Games, today we're back on the short track, the fast track to mayhem and chaos. Oh, and Vince is gone. Well, the Canadians could do us some luck, and the Korean is gone. Oh, the Korean's gone, the Japanese has gone, the Italian's gone. And would you believe it, Andy Gable has got a free ride.
Good afternoon again. It's all smiles in Nagano. The skiing went ahead overnight and along with short track, we'll have a terrific men's giant slalom. Herman Meyer against Alberto Tomba. But it's the short track that will take us through the first part of the program. The early stages of the men's 500 featuring Nicky Gooch and Matt Jasper for Britain. Ladies 500 and the men's relay as well. Then the men's giant slalom and Deborah Compagnoni going for a third gold in the women's slalom. Speed skating, biathlon and Nordic combined will complete the program today. News overnight, though, that another athlete has tested positive for marijuana in a random drugs test. And uh, the authorities in Nagano are refusing to identify the athlete or the sport involved. The Canadian snowboarder, Ross Rebagliati, was tested positive for marijuana last week. But uh, he was given back his gold medal because there was no agreement between the Olympic and skiing authorities on banning the drug. However, it was also confirmed last night that unusually high levels of marijuana were found in a sample provided by Rebagliati back in December. More passive smoking. Heck of a lot of passive smoking. <laughs> now it's the second day of short track speed skating, an event where there's a certain amount of British optimism, although there wasn't a great deal to celebrate in the thousand metres a couple of days ago. But it's fast, it's furious, and here's our grandstand guide to short track. To emulate Nicky Gooch and win an Olympic medal is not as simple as just skating fast. The skaters are carried round the rink on a made-to-measure boot with a razor-sharp blade screwed in at a slight angle to cope with the very tight bends. That blade is vital for the start of the shorter race where the skaters are flat out to get to the first bend in first place. In the longer race, the skaters start more slowly and the first few laps are something of a cat and mouse affair. But by the time the competitors reach the finish, they're going to be flying at anything up to 30 miles an hour. And the winner is decided by the first skate to cross the line. On this occasion, Great Britain's Nicky Gooch lost second place by inches. Of course, the pace of the event, the cut and thrust of overtaking, and the slippery surface means falls are regular and dramatic. And another way to lose a medal is through disqualification. Nicky Gooch found that out in Lillehammer. Skaters must judge their overtaking precisely. But if you could conquer all those problems, you can become Olympic champion. Former British international Jamie Fern is here as we head towards the heats of the men's 500. Nicky Gooch will go in heat number three. But let's see the opening heats now with Paul Dickinson. The first heat, Anne of China, Gable of the USA, Yakovlev of the Ukraine and Hang of the People's Republic of Korea. Already Anne getting away. Quarter finalist in the 1,000 meters, Andrew Gable in third place. He was a surprise finalist. The Ukrainian sticking to the Chinese skater Gable there in third place. Two and a half laps to go. Andy Long of China leads. Ukrainian coming through now. The American Gable. There's a huge sign in the stadium saying, "Go for gold, Andy." But he could be in trouble here as they take the bell. It's only two who go through to the quarterfinals in two days' time. And Yulong of China in first place. Yakov Lev of the Ukraine. Gable coming through on the inside. Just. Oh. 43 75. And uh, An Yulong there taking a tumble. He may well have hurt himself badly there after the finish. Just outside the Olympic record. But has the Chinese skater finished his Olympic championship without really getting going? Andrew Gable just nipping through into second place. The Olympic 1000 meter champion, 17 year old Kim Dong Sung of Korea in heat two. Martin Johansson of Sweden right on the inside, but the Canadian Francois Drillet going through to take first place with four laps to go. It was an incredible achievement by the young Korean a couple of days ago when he won the 1000 meters. Junior world champion last year, senior world champion last year, now the Olympic champion. 
Two and a half laps to go. Drolley of Canada leads. Martin Johansson, very much taller. A big man in second place. And the Olympic 1,000 metre champion, young Kim Dong Sung of Korea, in third place. And he's really got to make a charge now. He goes through into second. Drolley of Canada leads. Kim Dong Sung times it perfectly. He'll take second place. He qualifies. Johansson is third and won't make it through to the quarterfinal. Good result, though, for Francois Drolet of Canada, winning heat two. David Stieg, the 500-meter world record holder, goes in heat three. A heat which sees Nicky Gucci of Great Britain going. Goodness knows what he must be feeling two days after being eliminated in the heats of the 1,000. This the distance where Nicky Gooch won bronze in Lillehammer. He's in fourth place. The world record holder of Steeg, coached by Britain's Wilf O'Reilly, is in first place. Kai Feng of China in second. Prijek of Poland in third. Nicky Gooch, as we came to understand in training, was not 100% fit. He'd suffered a virus, suffered flu, as so many other athletes in the Olympic Village have. In fourth place, it's going to be very close. He's coming through on the outside now. Has Nicky Gooch timed it perfectly? He's in second, he's gone. Oh, my goodness. Well, Versteeg goes through into first place comfortably. Kai Feng is in second. Prijek of Poland will not qualify. Nicky Gooch will not be able to go one better in the 500 meters than he did four years ago in Lillehammer. Desperately, desperately disappointing for British short track speed skating. That's David Stieg who goes through, and Kai Feng of China as well. But Nicky Gooch, out of shot, just coming through, skating through the finishing line. This is where it happened. Just too much on the ankle there. The skate went away from him. He's physically okay, which is good news for Britain. We have the relay later on. It certainly has not gone right at all for Nicholas Gooch, either in the 1,000 metres or here in the 500. And Jamie, you have to share Nicky Gooch's disappointment. He's had a terrible couple of days. Yeah, it's not been the best of championships for him. Um, sometimes when, when days, days can go like that and competitions can, can start off bad and just get worse and worse. He went out of the 1,000 a couple of days ago. His morale would have been low. How would he have worked to try and build himself up for this again? Um, hopefully would have done a lot of work with Dave Collins to uh, get himself right mentally. Um, when we saw him at the start, he did, he did look very tense. He did have a bad draw on the outside. But we mentioned that he'd had this virus last week and all the pace and all the power that was missing a couple of days ago still seemed to be missing. Yeah, that's right. He gets up to a bad start here and he's, he's uh, put, put under a lot of pressure from the start, really. Um, slipping all the time. Very similar sort of position to that he found himself in in the 1,000 metres. Yeah. Um, as we see here, the, the race has slowed down. The guy at the front is, uh, is actually slowed down. He's had a, a few problems of his own, but uh, Nicky makes a good move there onto the outside. But once you get onto the outside, it's, uh, it's difficult to keep your balance from that, from that. It was a good move, not an ill-judged move. That that was the right place to go, the right time to go. Yeah, it was uh, it was a good move. Once you've got the speed, it's best to uh, keep powering around the outside. Um, it does make it a bit more difficult with uh, with the forces going around the corner. But uh, he'd got himself into a pretty good position there. Just got up into second. Then what did you see as having happened there? Um, when it, the, the first time I saw it, I wasn't sure whether the Chinese guy actually touched Nicky, which on the outside is. Uh, would actually put him into the barrier, but uh, having looked at it again, I think he just lost his balance going around the outside. Should have been a comfortable heat for him, shouldn't it? Yeah, on paper, Nicky should have been, he would have been favourite to win that. As I say, he didn't get the best of starts, he put, put pressure on him straight away, but it's not the Nicky Gooch we used to seeing, that's for sure. The last hope for him is the relay, we've got that coming up a little later, but we had further hope with Matt Jasper, who was going in heat number four. Let's see what happened there. Matthew Jasper lines up in heat four in the 500 metres. And what just happened to Nicky Gooch in the previous heat won't have brought or bought him any pleasure at all. Jasper lines up alongside Carnino of Italy, Rusty Smith of the United States, and Lai of China, silver medalist in the 1,000 metres two days ago. So a little last-minute adjustment there by Matt Jasper. Oh, my goodness! Well, he's still on his feet. But he got himself into all sorts of trouble there before the first bend. Now, 
Matt Jasper, actually the British record holder for 500 metres, has got it all to do if he wants to go through to the quarter-final. He's managed to keep in touch with the group. Rusty Smith just ahead of him. Carnino of Italy it is. Just behind Lai. And uh, a little bit of pushing there between Rusty Smith and Matt Jasper. Matt Jasper in third place. They'll hear the bell this time. And Jasper in about the same sort of position as Nicky Gooch was at the same stage in the race. Now, can he come off the bend and get through into second place? He can't. Lie of China wins it. Oh, my goodness gracious me. In the space of two heats, it's all gone wrong for Nicky Gooch, first of all. And now, Matt Jasper. It really is rough and tough stuff out there on the track over 500 meters. It's speed all the way, and it really does bring problems. Matt Jasper tried to get through into first place. Lie of China just ahead of him, and look at that. He was cut off there by Rusty Smith and Carnino, the Italian. Matt Jasper in fourth place, came through well there but impeded Rusty Smith. There's no doubt about that whatsoever. The Americans could well object about that, but Lai goes through in heat four. Jasper is out. And it's even worse. We've just heard that Matt Jasper has been disqualified for impeding Rusty Smith of the USA. For the fourth, fourth heat of the men's 500 meter race. In first place, Jia Junli of China. And in second place, Maurizio Carnino of Italy. Number 122, Matthew James Jasper of the Great Britain has been disqualified for impeding. Jasper disqualified, Gooch fell. This is not good news for Great Britain. It certainly isn't, but uh, Jamie, unlike Nicky, Matt drew a good lane. Yeah, that's right. He, um, he had the best of opportunities. He'd have a very, very strong race with the, the Italian guys very fast and the silver medalist from yesterday uh, on Tuesday, the 1,000 metres. Um, he had the best of opportunities with the inside draw, but... Uh, but it all went wrong right from the start. Yeah, he, he caught the back of the uh, Chinese guy's skate, and from there he just went back into fourth place, lost, we lost can some distance. Let's just see the start here, because... I mean, it's tough then to come back, because obviously panic's setting in. That's at, right, at that that's right. He, he's lost five yards there, which he's got to then catch up, which he manages to do um, straight away. But here... He's, he's, he's actually on the back of them now, which is which is good, but it's a uh, bit of a hot-headed move there, I think. <laughs> um, it, the, the American guy did move wide to, to get a bit of a better line for himself, and Matt just saw the opportunity and went for it. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't, and on this occasion, um, it didn't work for him. For the final lap, it, he had to do something rather special coming round here. He certainly tried, but just no room. Yeah, he, he'd been chasing the whole race. He was more or less checked for speed at the start and then he was chasing all the way and it, there was nothing really left to make a challenge on the last corner. Well this is what caused the disqualification and you think yeah. the right decision? You shouldn't be overtaken on, on what we call the apex block which is the middle block of the bend. It should be uh, the first first two blocks is where you do the overtaking mm. and if you haven't made it by then you are liable to be disqualified. Mm. But for Matt, I mean, it, he did well getting through to uh, the B final before. Yeah. I mean, was, would he have realistically been expected to get through that heat? Um, as I said, it, on, on paper it was, a, it was a tough heat, but he had the best of opportunities with the, with the inside lane. If he'd have put himself first coming out of the bend, he would have, uh, would have had a good, good run in for, for one of the qualifying positions, but uh, not this time, unfortunately. OK, well, Britain's still uh, into the relay, but there's four heats remaining in the men's 500 metres. Let's go back for heat five. Mark Gagnon of Canada lines up alongside Lee of Korea in Heat 5. Nakbar of Germany and Yun of the People's Republic of Korea, the other two. And Yun it is who gets away. Oh, the German all over the place on the first bend, just as Matt Jasper was in the heat before. This looks as though it could be very quick. Now, Mark Gagnon was disqualified, just like Matt Jasper was, in the 1,000 metres, an event where he held the world record and was one of the favourites. The Canadian out to make amends for that. He's in third place, goes into second, behind Lee. It's Lee and Mark Gagnon, but again, pushing and barging on the, the straight, just coming off the bend. It's Lee at the moment, 
Mark Gagnon just behind. They could afford to relax just a wee bit. Mark Gagnon knows that. He takes the pressure off. He's in second place behind Lee of Korea. Oh. Very quick once again, 43.84. Just outside the Olympic record. The Koreans going very, very well indeed. An intriguing lineup in heat six to Rao of Japan. He set an Olympic record for the 1,000 meters, but uh, didn't make it through to the semi-finals. Just behind him, Chai, the Olympic champion from 1994. He was disqualified in his semi-final, where he took two skaters out. And Stephen Bradbury of Australia, who really is in hot company here. Bradbury, who was one of four Austra Australian skaters, who won a bronze medal in the relay in 94. He's five meters behind the other two, who are flying at the moment. Tarao leads for Japan. Chai of Korea cruising in second place. Stephen Bradbury will not qualify through to the quarterfinals. The Japanese skater comes through 42.95, a new Olympic record, and just a couple of tenths outside the world record. He's done exactly the same here in the 500 as he did in the first round of the 1,000 metres. But can he go all the way through to the final? Hitoshi Uematsu of Japan, next to Daniel Weinstein of the USA, Mathieu of France, and right on the inside, big Eric Bedard, a surprise bronze medalist in the 1,000 metres two days ago. This is heat seven. Uematsu just giving himself enough room at the start there. The roars for the Japanese skaters is fantastic. Eric Bedard of Canada, his confidence boosted by what happened in the 1,000 meters. It was an Asian 1-2, but Bedard came through well to get the bronze medal. Uematsu was disqualified in his quarterfinal for that distance, but he is a very, very good sprinter over this distance. Daniel Weinstein of the USA is making a bit of room up on the Japanese skater. They take the bell. Eric Bedard looking confident in first place. Uematsu in second. Daniel Weinstein of the USA has got a lot of work to do. Canada, Japan, USA. So Eric Bedard and Uematsu in the end qualifying comfortably. Nishitani on the outside, hoping to become the third Japanese skater to make it through to the quarterfinals, and he goes straight into the lead. Ahead of the Italian, Fabio Carta, who fell in his semi-final of the 1,000. I don't think the Italian will make the same mistake here. The Frenchman, Bruno Loscos, is a distant third, and way, way behind them. Octi Abri of Mongolia, a comparative novice in this very fast sport. Japan go through, and then Italy into first place. Fabio Carter. Certainly the British boys, Nicky Gooch and Matt Jasper, know this Italian very, very well indeed. He's a fine skater. Fabio Carter of Italy leads. He's going to go comfortably through. The Japanese Nishitani eases down in second place. Those the two qualifiers. So Nishitani joins Tarao with his Olympic record in the 500 meters and Uematsu into the quarterfinals in two days' time. And after those heats, Jamie, who do you think looks good for the gold? Um, I think Che, the defending champion, looks uh, he looked very comfortable. Um, just both Tarao, the Japanese skater, and Che skated the Olympic record. And Che did look very, very comfortable. Tarao in record-breaking form there. Is, a da is, is there a danger that you leave performances like that behind in, in the early heats and can't reproduce them in the final? Yeah, possibly. I mean, Tarao did get out from the start, so he did have what we call an easy race. He wasn't interfering or interfered with by any other skaters. Uh, so he had more or less the track to himself from the start. And Che did look very comfortable in, in second spot. So it's between them two, I think. Such a quick event. It seems totally dependent on making a good start. Yeah, um, there's only 40, 43, 42 seconds of the race, so uh, a good start is, is very important, but uh, it's not always essential, but uh, it does make life difficult if you don't get the best of starts. Well, it hasn't been a good start or a good finish for Nicky Gooch or Matt Jasper. After their disappointment today, the further disappointment, where does the British sport lie now? Um, I don't want to s sound too negative. I think um, this, it, it's only one event when all said and done. Um, I think we've got a good setup, and Alan Luke's national coach is setting up a good, good, strong uh, 
team that we've we've got at the moment. But um, yeah, I think they'll, they'll have to have a look into it and see why we didn't perform. Whether it was uh, Nicky's illness that caused himself to not perform at his best because he didn't have the power or, or the the concentration to carry out what he did four years ago. But uh, I'm sure they'll be able to sort something out. Well, maybe still something to come in the relay. We've got that in a, in a few minutes' time. Yes, but the women's 500 metres was also taking place. But in this, the medals would be decided today. We begin our coverage with the first of the quarterfinals. First quarter final of the women's 500 metres. Isabel Charest right in the middle, in the red. And Blacken goes into the lead. The world record holder for Canada. Four laps to go. Charest leads from Choi of Korea. Yang Yang A from China, world champion already in third place. And Tikanina of Russia is struggling just a wee bit at the moment in fourth place. Isabel Charest dominated her heat, stayed out of trouble, and that's the secret in 500 meter racing. Choi of Korea going well in second place. Yang Yang, she got a silver medal in the relay the other night for the Chinese national side. They're coming up now to the bell. A bit of a tussle between the Chinese and the Korean. And uh, Sheree, goodness knows how she managed to get out of that. But the world record holder's got a bit of work to do. It's Choi of Korea coming through. The world record holder's out. Yang Yang A of China goes through. Korea and China safely through to the semi-finals. And uh, Isabel Sheree of Canada, the world record holder, and a veteran of so many internationals over the years will be kicking herself there. She led from the start, but got into trouble on the last lap. I wonder if the Canadian veteran would have grounds for an objection on the basis that Yang Yang A of China came right across her line and let the Korean through on the inside. There has been a disqualification. Choi of Korea certainly wins that, and I wouldn't be at all surprised if Isabel Charest, the world record holder, was reinstated into the semi-finals. Certainly, the caption shows the Canadian is now in second place. Isabel Charest of Canada reinstated into second place. Yang Yang A of China, the world champion, is disqualified. Quarterfinal number two right on the outside. Annie Perot of Canada has just seen her teammate and friend Isabel Charest go through to the semi-finals. She's up against a trio from the Asian continent and uh, straight away taking them on. Annie Perot going into the lead ahead of Zhong of the People's Republic of Korea. Then the Chinese Yang Yang S at 20 years old. One year younger than a teammate who was disqualified in the last heat. And Annie Perot, like Charest, likes to lead from the front and that's the safest place in the women's 500 meters canada lead just under two laps to go yang yang has got a bit of work to do in third place and uh, tremendous cheers for tanaka the japanese champion oh all sorts of problems the japanese and korean have gone down and so annie Poro and the korean the Chinese, rather, Yang Yan go through, 46.42. And I think there'll be a lot of discussion about that one as well. Drama in the first two quarterfinals of the women's 500 meters. Straight away, an objection being made by the Japanese coach about the fact that Shikaji Tanaka of Japan was taken out by Zhang of the People's Republic of Korea. Annie Perot was comfortably in the lead. People's Republic of Korea skater getting in a tangle with the Canadian. And there goes Tanaka, both of them out. The Japanese contingent excited because Shikaji Tanaka has been reinstated by referee Andrianus van der Volt. And that means that Japan are in the semi-final. On the inside, Kim Yun Mai of Korea, already two Olympic relay gold medals. And Toshigawara of Japan, she's absolutely tiny, but zooms through into the lead. Ahead of the Bulgarian Radanova. Toshigawara absolutely flying on the first lap. And just listen to the crowd. Toshigawara leads. Two and a half laps to go. Radanova in second place. And a surprise that Kim Yun Mai of Korea is right at the back, but coming through on the Italian Abani at the moment. It looks as though Japan will certainly get one skater in the semi-final. Toshigiwara goes through. There goes the bell. Toshigiwara 
Sakura and Radanova. In fact, Japan will have two because Tanaka went through. Because Oh, she's gone. Oh, my goodness gracious me. Abani goes through first past the line. Oh, there were just meters to go. And in fact, Toshigiwara is the second skater to go over the line. Abani can't believe it. She wasn't really in the hunt for a semi-final place as they came off the bend. Mara Obani, Toshigiwara, smiling just a little bit, but again, objections from the coaches of Japan, as there was when Shikaji Tanaka was taken out in the second quarterfinal. Drama in the dying seconds. It looked as though Radana of Bulgaria took out Toshigiwara, and in fact, the Korean went through in second place, or even the Bulgarian, they both slid over the line. So who, who's ever skates were over that finishing line first will certainly qualify, but I suspect there will be a third one going through as well, and I bet it's the tiny Toshigiwara of Japan. Tears on the faces of Evgenia Radanova of Bulgaria, disqualified in quarterfinal number three for taking out Toshigawara of Japan. Urbani of Italy goes through, Kim of Korea, and now Toshigawara, the second Japanese skater to go through to the semifinals. The last quarterfinal, right on the inside. The Korean, Chun Li Kyung, three Olympic goals to her credit already. Two from relays, and she nearly went within the first 50 meters. But the Chinese skater Wang, the new Olympic record in the heats, puts about two or three meters between herself and the Korean. And at the moment, the Russian Palaeva and the American Erin Gleason fighting it out for fourth place. China away, but Korea not letting them go at all. It's Wang and Chun coming around with a lap and a half left. The American is way off the pace. The Russian has made up a little bit, Marina Palaeva. So are we going to have some drama in this final quarterfinal? It could well be the Russian coming through on the inside, but I think the Korean just got it. Wang of China certainly in first place. Chun of Korea, I think, in second, followed by the Russian Palaeva. So drama in the ladies' event. That third quarterfinal seemed to have it all. Now, was the Bulgarian, was she right to be disqualified? Um, it, it seems unfair, but she did actually run up run the back of the Japanese skater who subsequently would have failed to qualify. Um, so, yeah, I'm afraid it, it was the right decision. Um, but she didn't look as though she needed to, to push that much. She looked as though she would probably qualify second anyway. Yeah, I think she was worried about the Korean girl coming up the inside. Um, on the last bend and, and pipping her to the line. So she tried to get out as quick as possible, but in doing so, she, she basically ran up the, the back of the Japanese skater, not the feet from under her. We've said how fast and furious this sport is. It seems as though a split-second decision can, uh, can yeah. be pretty costly. Here. Yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's f fast and frantic stuff, so you have to keep your wits about you. That's the main thing. And in the ladies, it seems very similar to the men that uh, a lot of the, the sort of Asian countries are, are, are dominating. Yeah, they, they've got a, a very good setup, uh, the Asians. So, uh, what do they have that we don't? <laughs> <laughs> Probably lots more ice time and a, a big squad and uh, and things like that. So, they, they keep producing these skaters anyway. So they're doing something right. Okay. Well, we've seen the quarterfinals decided. Now let's go back and see the semi-finals of the ladies' 500 meters. Shikaji Tanaka of Japan reinstated into this first semi-final after being taken out by another skater in the quarters. And just outside her, Yang Yang, Urbani of Italy, Isabel Charest, the Canadian, goes into the lead, the world record holder, and Choi of Korea, the Korean in third place. Isabel Charest of Canada, a veteran of international racing. But at this level, you need a lot of experience. You need to keep your cool and not panic. And Charest, perhaps for her, the best possible tactic with two laps to go is to get out in the front and stay out of trouble. It's Canada from China. And the Koreans got a lot of work to do. Choi, Isabel Charest going for bust here to make it through to the final. Charest is going to make it quite easily. Yang Yang of China in second place, 44.99, just outside the world record, her own world record, but it is a new Olympic record for the Canadian in the first semi-final.
wouldn't be at all surprised to see Annie Perreault of Canada right on the inside trying to do what her teammate did, Isabel Charest, in the last semi-final. Two Koreans here. Annie Perreault from Canada to Shigawara of Japan and Wang of China. And look at that. The Canadians done exactly what we predicted. China in second place through Wang. A new Olympic record on the heats, but that's just been smashed by Isabel Charest. The two Koreans there being led by Chun in third place at the moment and uh, Toshigawara of Japan trying to get on terms. This is very, very quick indeed. Isabel Charest showed what could be done if you take these skaters on and that's what Annie Perot is doing now as she hits the bow. Oh, a clash there between Wang and Chun. Annie Perot, it looks as though he's going to go through, but he'll be in second place. It's the Chinese skater that makes it. Well, that is a big, big surprise because that means that for the first time in these w Olympic Winter Games, a Korean will not contest a final. A major surprise there. But two Canadians are there. Annie Perot here and the world record holder, Isabel Charest, in the last semi-final. And we'll have those women's finals, the B final and the A final, in a few minutes' time. Now back to Britain. Britain in the relay, the organised chaos of the 5,000 metres relay, or at least I think it's organised. Two semi-finals, Britain going in the first of those. We're back with Paul Dickinson. The starter getting ready to send the British relay team, the Chinese, the Japanese and the Canadians away in this first semi-final of the men's 5,000 metre relay. 45 laps ahead. It's Matt Jasper, whose morale must be pretty low after being disqualified in the heats of the 500 metres. Handing over there to Nicky Gooch, who, was, uh, who fell. So I'm sure that uh, the team management, Alan Luke and Dave Collins, have been talking the guys up, as it were, to get their confidence back. Nicky Gooch on the ice at the moment, very experienced in this situation. And uh, he'll be calling the shots in terms of determining how often the changeover takes place. Alan Luke told us a little earlier, as Matthew Rowe comes round for Great Britain, it's probably going to be about every lap and a half or so. So, Matthew Rowe sending Rob Mitchell on his way. Rob, a medical student from Birmingham, and uh, he was very grateful that Birmingham University have given him a two-year sabbatical in pursuit of his aim of getting to the Olympic Games, which he's done well. Now it's Matt Jasper. The British team wearing the yellow helmets, the Canadians wearing blue, the Chinese in red in first place at the moment, and the Japanese at the back in white. 38 laps to go, coming round to 37. Great Britain in third place, Nicky Good skating. He'll be handing over to Matthew Rowe in just a moment, the big push coming from the Guildford man. Matthew Rowe, just 20 years old, lives in Isleworth and said that his relations will be watching this and they'll be as nervous as he is. His first Olympic competition, but uh, a very promising junior. Rob Mitchell from the Peterborough Speed Skating Club, tucked in behind the Canadians. They're just behind the Chinese. The Japanese are about six or seven metres back. 33 laps to go. The Japanese getting in a tangle there. And at the moment, for Japan, it's Kodera trying to get on terms with Matt Jasper. Canada, Francois Drole is out there. He's a very experienced skater. But uh, Lai Jaijuan it is for China with the Canadians coming through. And Nicky Gooch, I'm sure, determined to make amends for his disappointment in both the 1,000 metres, where he was knocked out in the heat, and the 500 metres, his Olympic bronze medal winning distance from Lillehammer, where he fell. It's Matthew Rowe now, coming through, about to hand over to Rob Mitchell, just behind the Chinese. A good push there from Matthew Rowe. Rob Mitchell, tall and lean, leans into the bend. He's got the Canadian Eric Bedard right on his tail. The first semi-final of the men's 5,000 metre relay, 27 laps to go. Two teams only to qualify for the final in two days' time. At the moment, it's Matt Jasper, British record holder for the 500 metres on the ice. And one of the Japanese uh, skaters fell. He got in the way of Nicky Gooch. 
the outgoing skater for Japan was fine, but it means that Great Britain all of a sudden find themselves 10 meters back. The Canadians, Japanese, and Chinese have sensed that, and so they've upped the pace with 23 and a half laps to go. At the moment, it's Matthew Rowe. He's just got to take things a little bit steady as he hands over to Rob Mitchell. Rob Mitchell trying to get out of the way of some of the skaters on the ice. They've got to get onto the inside as quickly as they can, away from those who are racing. Rob Mitchell now handing over to Matt Jasper. Jasper, the most experienced skater on the ice, probably. Certainly in the British team. At the moment, with 19 and a half laps to go, it's Canada and China almost locked together. Great Britain back in contact with the rest. And as predicted by national coach, and as determined by Nicky Gooch out on the ice, and he pushes Matthew Rowe away, the changeover's coming every lap and a half. Well, Great Britain have done brilliantly to get back into third place. Matthew Rowe, certainly the future of short track speed skating in Britain. Oh, once again, one of the Canadian uh, skaters getting in the way of Rob Mitchell, but Mitchell negotiated that well, but again, there's a gap opening up. Japan's, oh, the Japanese has gone. Now then. Well, with 15 laps to go, Japan, I think, are out of it, but can Great Britain get back on terms? They're about 20 meters behind China, who are in the lead, behind Canada. The handover, out of shot. It's Nicky Gooch on the ice for Great Britain. 12 and a half laps to go. China in the lead. Don't take any notice of the, the skater in second place. That's the Japanese skater who's a lap behind. Canada in third, but where are Great Britain? At the moment, Matthew Rowe trying desperately to get on terms. They've got a massive amount of work to do, the British quartet now, to get through to the final. A big turning for, point for Great Britain. Two-thirds of the way through the race. Coming round with nine laps to go. China in the lead, Canada in second, Great Britain in third. Only two teams to qualify for the final on Saturday. And certainly with the disappointment we've had so far in the men's individual events, it looks as though the final day of short track speed skating in the Olympic winter program will be without a British representative unless a miracle happens here. Just six laps for the British team to get back on song. I don't think it's going to happen. China lead down the back straight. For Great Britain, it's Matthew Rowe way, way back. Almost half the track. About 50 meters behind China and Canada here. Well, certainly a rethink in terms of the future of British short track speed skating will have to take place. There'll be a bit of an inquest by Alan Luke and Dave Collins and the rest of that, I'm sure. It's very disappointing from a British point of view. That is Lai Zhaijuan of China looking comfortable. The Canadians have got such an experienced squad as the first two teams take the bell. China will qualify without a doubt along with the Canadians. And it's going to be Nicky Gooch. How ironic that it's going to be Nicky Gooch coming through to take the line for Great Britain, a distant third. What a disappointing games he has had. We're all desperately disappointed for him personally, but no one will be sadder than the man himself. Canada delirious about their success. China looking very solid indeed, but Great Britain do not make it through to the final of the men's relay. So disappointment again for Britain. And uh, Jamie, I don't think you want to be in the British camp tonight. No, um, I think we, sh we should have stayed in second place. We got into second place. Um, it was slow over the first few laps, which would have helped settle any nerves that the team may have had. But uh, they, they just got caught up with dead skaters each time and made it difficult for themselves. Yes, because you're talking about the changeovers when they're actually pushing on. There's yeah. a lot of uh, bodies to get past. That's right. I mean, if, if you're in the first first two places, then obviously you've just got one, one person to get past. Um, and it can be quite a nice ride in second spot. Um, we had second spot at one point, 
and then we slipped back to fourth and then we started encountering uh, some problems. Um. You were quite impressed with Matt Rowe though. Yeah, I, I was very impressed with Matt Rowe. Um, he's only 20, he, he's, uh, it's his first Olympic Games and uh, he looked very smooth, very very composed. I was, I was very impressed. But sadly it was the changeover t between uh, Matt and Rob Mitchell that, that yeah. was the costly one where they, they sort of pushed him into another skater. Into the back yeah, of another skater. Um, Robert actually he came in a bit early and a bit slow and he moved a bit wide which uh, got a bit of a gap between Great Britain uh, who were in, th I think we were in third place at that spot and then the Chinese skater who just finished pushing his his guy um, impeded um, so we lost 10, 15 yards on that change alone. And it seemed as though then it was yeah, time to give up. I mean once you lose 10, 15 yards on that sort of ice, once it's getting cut up in the 5,000 metre event then it is it's very difficult to get back. It's not, not worth trying to chase because uh, once you get back then you've got nothing to go for to win the race anyway. You know the team very well. How will they be taking this? Because there were such hopes of, of, of medals in, in all the events. I think they'll be very disappointed. If you look at the time they skated, um, it's six seconds off the British record. So uh, if they would have gone out on a new British record, that would have been one thing. But uh, to actually go out and not skate to your full potential, uh, I think they'll be very disappointed. And it's not great for the sport either that uh, needs a lift. That's, that's right. Um, we were hoping to build on Nikki's performance of four years ago. Mm. Um, Matt, Matt did, did, work, it did do well in the 1,000 metres, but uh, we couldn't build on it today, unfortunately. No, certainly couldn't. Disappointing for Great Britain, but now let's go back and see what happened in the second semi-final. The second semi-final, Italy, Australia, United States of America and Korea. Well, in the lead already, the Koreans wearing the red helmets. United States, former Olympic medalist, they're wearing yellow. Italy, former European champions, wearing white. And the Australians at the back, there, Stephen Bradbury, they're in blue. So 42 and a half laps to go in this relay. Already Canada and China have both made it through to the final. And a fairly steady pace. The Olympic record, and that incidentally was held by Italy from 1994. That record was absolutely smashed by both Canada and China in the first semi-final. Korea lead United States in second place. And wearing number one on his helmet for the USA, Eric Flame. He carried the uh, American flag at the opening ceremony. The only man in history to win medals in both long and short track. And his idol is in the Olympic Stadium here tonight. And that is Eric Hyden, five times a gold medalist in Olympic winter competition. And look at this, Australia in the lead. 37 and a half laps to go. Stephen Bradbury it is. They won Australia's first ever Olympic winter medal four years ago when they took the bronze in the relay. They haven't had very much success at individual level, but uh, certainly they go very well together indeed as a relay team, as do the Italians in second place, the reigning Olympic champions. 34, lap, 34 and a half laps to go in this second semi-final. Great Britain eliminated in the first. Canada and China it was who will contest the final. Great Britain, the B final, against the two losing teams here. And you certainly can't separate any of the teams at the moment, except to say the Italians are just lifting the pace a little bit, followed by the Australians, Koreans, just biding their time, perhaps. The Koreans, the Olympic champions back in 1992, in third place, the United States have got some work to do. They're losing touch. You've got to try and stay on the back of the pack as you can and be towed round. The changeovers as well, so crucial. A good changeover can make a lot of difference. Meters and somebody's gone. The Americans, in fact. So perhaps their pressure beginning to tell. It's Rusty Smith who's trying to make up on the rest. Thomas O'Hare it was who fell. One fears now that the Americans, as the Japanese had in the first semi-final, have got far too much to do. They're half a lap behind. The Italians, Australians and Koreans have seen that. They're trying to get away even further. A big push there by the number one, Antonioli from Italy. 
Fabio Carter, the most experienced skater of the Italian squad, puts a gap between himself and Stephen Bradbury of Australia. And Kim Duck Sung, world champion and Olympic champion, now at 1,000 metres, being overtaken by the Australian. Korea back in third place, and Italy, the reigning Olympic champions, are going very, very well. A big cho changeover from them now would help. Franceschina for Italy in the lead. 21 and a half laps to go. A bit of a surprise in view of the Italians' poor performance in the individual events so far, although Fabio Carter not going too badly in the heats of the 500 metres. But Italy leading by about 25 metres from Korea, then Australia. United States a long way back. Fabio Carter coming round with 19 laps to go for Italy in this second semi-final of the relay. Now the Koreans beginning to close the gap a little bit. Australia finalist in 1994 a losing touch. Kieran Hansen it is for Australia trying to close the gap on the Korean. But that is going to be difficult because it is Chai Jai Hoon, a reigning Olympic champion from Lillehammer. That was in the 1,000 metres. He lost his title here two days ago. That is Rusty Smith. The Americans now, well, about 55, 60 metres adrift. The Italians going very well indeed. Antonioli trying to increase the gap on the Koreans, but the Koreans are coming back. There's no doubt about that whatsoever. Legion 1 it is. Fabio Carta for Italy. Oh! He nearly lost it there. 13 laps to go. Australia have got to get back in touch. Stephen Bradbury, perhaps their best individual skater. And Fabio Carter just having a little look behind him as he sends Maurizio Conino on his way. Just two to qualify for the final. The changeover coming this time round. It's about every one and a half laps, which was the tactic that Great Britain used in the last semi-final. America, the United States, are certainly out of it at this stage. And the Koreans just uh, slipping through on the inside. That was almost predictable, but Italy grabbing the lead back. Antonioli is not going to let the Korean through. Italy and Korea come through with eight laps to go. They've got a big gap between themselves and the bronze medalist from Lillehammer, Australia, in third place. And like Canada and China, in the last semi-final, Italy and Korea looking pretty safe at the moment. It looks chaos out there. Thank goodness the skaters know what they're doing. The guys on the inside just biding their time. And by a strict rotation, they'll pick up the speed. And then comes the changeover with a big push. The Italian, Francesca, sent on his way. Korea going into the lead. And they're almost lapping the Americans now. I wonder if the American is going to impede the progress of Korea in first place, Italy in second. I think they're pretty safe. So Korea come through, Italy now with the last changeover. Well ahead of Australia. They're not going to repeat their success of four years ago. They take the bell, Korea in the lead. Kim Dug Sung, this brilliant teenager, heading towards perhaps another gold medal when the relay takes place on Saturday. Italy, the reigning Olympic champions, in second place, just outside the new Olympic record, which Canada set in the last semi final. The United States will fight it off with Australia in the B final against Br Great Britain on the final day of the short track speed skating program. And those finals are on Saturday, along with the men's 500 metres. The medals to be decided in short track today were in the women's 500 metres. We've seen the semi-finals. Now let's see the finals, the B final, first of all. Two Koreans contesting the consolation final, the B final of the women's 500 metres. Right on the inside, Chun Lee Kyung. A teammate Choi Toshigawara of Japan in the black. 
number 52 and Mara Obani from Italy. I must say I was amazed that neither Korean got through to the final. That honor has gone to two Canadians and two Chinese, but at the moment it's Korea one and two as they come through with three laps to go. Choi in the lead, Chun in second place, Toshigawara now the Japanese skater in last place. They've had a tough time out there, the Japanese, over the last few days. The Koreans certainly throughout Olympic history since 1992 have been almost totally dominant with just one or two exceptions, but at the moment just squeezing through on the inside is three-time Olympic gold medalist Chun as they hit the home straight for the last time as Chun who takes it from her teammate Choi and the Italian Mara Ubani from Italy in third place. The women's 500 meter final. Canada have two skaters. China have two skaters. A fascinating confrontation. Wang Chun Lu being presented to the crowd. Third in the World Championships in this stadium last year. Isabel Charest, the world record holder who's looked in tremendous form throughout the heats, the quarterfinal, and the semi final. Yang Yang of China, the world champion, lining up next to the world record holder. And Annie Perrault, an Olympic medalist herself from relays where Canada are so strong. Four and a half laps of the track. Or well, having seen Isabel Charest's form in the previous rounds, I wonder if the world record is under threat. Certainly, the early pace suggests it might be. Oh, and already Yang Yang, the world champion, is in desperate trouble right at the back. It's a teammate, Wang, who leads. There's going to be no world record here, I don't think. It's all about tactics at the front there. Canada in second and third place, ready to pounce. Annie Perrault it is. As Isabel Charest goes through on the inside, and Charest's gone. And so has uh, the Chinese. This is incredible. Annie Perrault could be the new Olympic champion. But she has been chased by Yang Yang, who is way off the pace herself as they take the bell. Well, all Annie Perot has got to do is keep her cool, but Wang is, uh, Yang Yang is coming through. She's not going to get it. Annie Perot is the Olympic champion. It's a very, very slow time, but that final was full of drama. It remains to be seen whether there is any disqualification. There could be two disqualifications, which means that Chun could be promoted, the Korean, from the B final. But there's no doubt about the champion. The biggest moment in this sport of her life, a veteran of short track speed skating. Well, this is the moment when it all went wrong for the world record holder, Isabel Charest, Charest coming up on the shoulder of Wang, and I do think it was the Canadian's fault, but that's not for me to decide, that's the judges. The world record holder getting into a tangle for the first time during this Olympic tournament pushing Wang wide. The Chinese athlete and the Canadian crashing to the ice and Yang Yang seeing the gap, but she couldn't catch Perot. Annie Perot is confirmed as the Olympic champion. It's Yang Yang from China who gets the silver. Wang it was who didn't finish after Isabel Charest's disqualification. And that means that Chun Li Kyung of Korea is promoted from the B final into the bronze medal position. So drama once again, and Jamie Annie Perot, Olympic champion, a surprise. Yeah, a big surprise. Um, she, I think she had a lot of luck along the way to uh, to the final, and uh, I was hoping that Isabel Charest was going to win it. Um, she's been skating the best; she's been in the best form basically, and uh, I, I wanted her to win win the title, but Annie Perot's come out the winner. But we've seen so many incidents uh, in short track uh, over the over the two days that we've been watching, and that race was certainly full of incidents. Yeah, uh, a few few goings on there, um, and a few overtaking manoeuvre. Yes, right at the start there were problems. Yeah, Isabel's winding up on the outside to make a move, uh, just just settling in in second place. The pace is quite slow at this point. I think the Chinese girl is just trying to saved some for the latter part of the race. So Isabel decides she's going to go down the inside and eventually treads on a block and takes the Chinese girl with her, which leaves uh, a gold medal on the plate for Annie Perot.
and a silver as well for, for Yang Yang. But I mean, that, that incident there, the Chinese girl didn't get up to finish, um, but she must have known that there could have been a medal in it, or is that not? I, I, I couldn't comment on what, what the thoughts were behind uh, whether she was injured and couldn't, couldn't get up to finish or, or whether she was so disappointed at his incident again. She just barged there. I think that would have been all right, but uh, Isabel trod on the block and that took them both there. But, well, here we go again. But it was the right move for Shere. Possibly. She, was, she would... Uh, it would have been iffy even if she hadn't have fallen, whether she'd have been disqualified or not, um, she still made contact with the Chinese girl. So even if they didn't both go down, there was a question mark whether she'd have been allowed that manoeuvre. Uh, as, as I said earlier, with Matt's manoeuvre, when he was disqualified, it was a bit late. Um, but uh, the block paid, uh, got, got them both out in the end. So you need to be strong mentally in this sport because so many things happen. I mean, Olympic dreams are over and just a... A yeah. few seconds, aren't they? Yeah. Very, very tough. Anyway, thanks very much, Jamie. We will see you again on uh, Saturday for the yeah. final day.